Hey everybody, final thoughts time for My Village. From designers Inca and Marcus Brand, the sequel to their big hit Village, which is, you know, it's really, really interesting. I mean, I think a lot of people might incorrectly assume, oh, this is just Village the Dice Game, right? Like Raw the Dice Game or Nations the Dice Game. You know, there's always the Dice Game that comes out. And those are always like really simple, light, little kind of distillations of, of you know, it's Big Brother game. My Village is not that at all. This game is just as big and deep and heavy. If anything, I would say maybe if it's even a little bit more brain burnery than the original Village was. Um, in large part because, man, they just put it all out there. There is just so much available to you right from the get-go. This is a very big sandboxy type game. And every time you play, all the churches are available, all the town halls are available, all the different types of shops are available, and you're just like, wow, what am I gonna do? And over time, as you start buying stuff and building an engine, looking for those common numbers. Oh, if, if I get this, when I roll fives, I could, I could trigger six actions. That's really, really cool. And very satisfying when you pull it off, if you've built a bunch of cards that work together, simpatico style. And you know, there are an ample number of different paths to victory, just like its predecessors, like Village. The travel path, the, the religion path, the civic path, the, the commerce path, and you know those different paths do interact and intertwine with each other because the civic one gives you special abilities that affect everything. You need to be able to produce goods both for the commerce path and the religious path, and to a certain extent, the travel path. And then on top of that, while you've got all those things intermingled, you have, again, the grim specter of death, ever watching, ever waiting. Um, and there's a big, big element that that brings as well. As you are trying to strategically decide what is the right time for my people to die so that I can score points on the Town Chronicle, or if I know I'm never gonna get those points, at least grab those spaces so somebody who's well suited to scoring points doesn't get to have those points. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really, there is just a lot going on here. So. I would certainly say, you know, this is uh, on the heavier scale of dice-centric games, of, you know, the kind of dice pool games. I mean, this is up there with Marco Polo or something like that. So, I just wanted to state that right up front. This is not Village the Dice Game. This is its own thing. That's why it's not called Village the Dice Game, it's called My Village, because everybody has their own village, and the game is really rich and deep, and works really well. It's very, very smart, and again, I think the thing we enjoy about it the most is just how satisfying it is. I mean, this is an engine builder um, you know, to its core, and when you build a strong engine and you get the opportunity to run it, it feels great. Now, um, there are some problems that Jen and I have with it, uh, although I think they're really kind of unique to us. The number one issue that we face is, actually, if you watched the extended playthrough, you heard it pop up. Jen's just right, sitting right there. She's uh, working on her glass website. And so she was listening to me do the run through and she had to pop up saying, hey, stop being so callous. Because in this game, you have to be callous. You have to be cold and calculating. A lot of the game revolves around choosing the right time for your people to die and strategically planning for that and profiting from it. You know, and that's just something that Jen is very uncomfortable with. Now, the original Village, it was a huge problem for her. I mean, so much so that even though we both loved the gameplay, we had to get rid of it because, you know, in that game, you know, the, the people, they, they were actually little meeples and they had numbers on their chest as they got older. They went from one to two to three and you really kind of got attached to them and, and then eventually they died. And that was just too much for Jen. She was very unhappy. I mean, it literally made her unhappy to play that. She never wanted anybody to die. Now, this game, it's somewhat abstracted. Because, you know, you, you don't actually, I mean, this is your craftsman, which actually happens to look exactly like your um, parchment and looks like your plow and it looks like your money. You know, I mean, everything's abstracted. You know, there aren't, there's, this, there's, not, there's less of a chance to get attached to these people because it's just, it's, it's just some faceless craftsman you got. Hey, you know, sooner or later he dies. It's, it's not that big a deal. But even still, <clears throat> to play this game at its best, you really do have to be very cutthroat in your decision-making process, and Jen is still a bit uncomfortable with that. Nowhere near as bad as Village. I mean, where you know, it actively made her unhappy. Here, she's just like a little bit, she can't really kind of get into the, oh, I am the Machiavellian master planner, and I will decide who lives and who dies. It's, a real, it's kind of still a turnoff for her, so that's an issue. And then the other issue with it 
And again, this is not going to be an issue for a lot of people. For people who love Caverna, as an example, um, or who think Caverna is better than Agricola. I mean, this is a conversation I find myself in often. Why do we still prefer Agricola over Caverna? That's because Agricola, right from the get-go, gives us this hand of cards that gives us kind of a direction. Agricola is not very much of a sandbox. Agricola, you get a bunch of cards, you make a plan, and you follow it through for the whole game. You try to deliver on that plan. Caverna is very wide open. It just gives you a, an explosion of options right from the get-go and says, hey, you know what? Do whatever you want. Every time they play, it's up to you to choose a different path. My village is very much like Caverna. Like I said, in that boom, all the churches are available right up front. All the city halls are available right up front. All the, you know, you know everything's available. So the game always starts in the exact same, or almost, almost the exact same setup. You know, there's different customers, and you know, the monks might be a little bit different, but that's a very minor thing for the most part. All the big ticket items, when you start playing My Village, will be there, will, will, the game will always start the same. The only real change is that um, right from the get-go, you roll dice, and those dice determine what actions you can do on the board. Now, to a certain extent, that is kind of similar to Village. Village kind of had the same thing. It was all open, but Village's randomizing factor, the cubes that got put on the board, to me, felt like it had a much stronger guiding influence on how the game evolved. Because you were specifically trying to collect certain cubes to achieve certain sub-goals in addition to whatever else you were doing, whether it was knowledge or whatever. And that really kind of gave us an overarching plot to our strategic decision making. In my village, it's entirely up to you, particularly in a two-player game. Because in a two-player game, which is the only way Jen and I'll ever play, you roll, there are enough dice. Each player gets to take two handfuls of dice that you'll always get to do something good. Now, it's interesting. I imagine if you were playing My Village with a full count of four players and you were the fourth player, by the time it comes around to you, there aren't very many dice left in that dice tray. And you just kind of have to make do with what you've got. And so, I think the more players you have in this game, much like Caverna, the more randomized seeds there are that make every game play out different. But my expectation is, as a two-player game, unless you've got two people who are actively willing every single time they play to say, hey, you know what, even though last time I used this strategy and it killed, it was awesome, and I could do it again right now because it's right there available to me, I choose not to do it just because. You know, that's the definition of a sandbox. It's the game doesn't direct you at all. Everything that happens is is predicated on your choices. For some players, that is manna from heaven. That's a breath of fresh air. That's exactly what they want. And for them, I think my village is going to be great. For me and Jen, we kind of don't like sandboxes. When you tell us to paint a painting, we want to say, could you give us the frame so we know what you know the outlines? Some people don't want a frame. Some people don't want to be constrained. We like to have constraints that we work within because that we enjoy the challenge of being given a puzzle to solve and solving it. Constraints do that. Sandboxes are kind of the opposite. Sandboxes are, hey, make your own puzzle and then solve it. We like to have the game present a puzzle to us. And so that's why, even though it's great, it works really well. The dice systems, all the interconnectivity between the systems, very well designed. Really, really rock solid. And I mean, I won't deny the fact that Jen and I had fun. But those two things, the fact that it's very sandboxy and the fact that Jen was still a little bit, ugh, oh, I'm just a little bit too evil plotting the death of my um, um, blacksmith, even though he's done so good because I need to kill him now so I can still get a point off his death because he's going to die eventually anyway. I better kill him now. You know, those kinds of things. Those two things combined really make it not quite a good fit for me and Jen. But I should hasten to add to that, as always, who cares what I think? Who cares what Jen thinks? We are just two data points. Um, our opinion is no better or worse than anybody else's. I, all I can do is explain to you why it didn't work for me and Jen. But more importantly, hopefully, if you watch the run through, you have a pretty good idea of whether it'll work for you, whether it sounds like a fun time that will work for you and yours. So please, disregard Jen's and my opinion. Draw your own opinions from the run through from my village. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please feel free to ask. If you noticed any goofs, I'm sure I made a few here and there. I probably forgot to advance the time tracks a few times, stuff like that. As always, Paulo will catch them, but you know, please point them out in case Paulo missed them. And otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.